Welcome to the barn, or rather, welcome to the living room. It is such a beautiful early spring day that I just could not resist sitting in the living room and doing a little bit of computer work and looking at the sunshine and the river outside. Hello, my name is Joanne Knight, and today I'm going to talk about this quilt right here. This is my modern churn dash quilt. It was a really fun quilt to do once I got through staring at it and finally decided that it was time to just quilt the quilt. And once I made up my mind about that, it went together pretty quickly. One of the things that I like to do is to use patterns in a way that they were not intended. That way you expand your pattern library and you're able to use some things that you have on hand. We're going to talk about this green area right here on this particular quilt. It's done in a modern fashion, which is kind of my love to do lately. And what I wanted to do was have a little bit of softness by adding just a little bit of floral to it. So I took a pattern by Kim Diamond, and it's called Cassidy Panto, and it's this pattern right here. It had the circular motion that I really liked. It had what looked like little pearls in it, which is always my go-to on things. So instead of asking Kim to redesign this pattern, I decided to do my own work and let Creative Studio help me with that. If I'm unfamiliar with the pattern, the first thing that I'm going to do is run virtual stitch out because I want to look and see how that pattern is going to quilt out. I love the little element that's both horizontal and vertical in this particular pattern, but the vertical element is okay between the two patterns of the Celtic and the flower. The horizontal one that's on the bottom is only on the bottom and it sticks a little bit farther down than what I wanted it to. So I decided to get rid of that. So I'm gonna hit my escape and I'm going to go to this pattern and I am going to divide it. I know that the pattern quilts left to right and then back right to left. I only want one row, so to speak. So go into nodes. I'm going to scroll in, and from running virtual stitch out, I know that this pattern is going to quilt the flower, and then it's going to go across and do this vertical element right here. Going on to my pink node and hitting my letter D, then selecting what I do not want and hitting the word delete, that gets rid of the bottom row of that pattern. Now you can see that I have markers on because I want to be sure that I keep those markers on in order to know if I have a jump stitch. The other thing that you want to do, because this pattern is going to be smaller, you can see that it's 41.95. I need to measure whatever the longest green stripe is to make sure that I have enough of the pattern divided out to be able to cover the longest green stripe because you don't want to have these back to back. You want to run them continuously. So I'm going to select the pattern again and I'm going to scroll in, go to nodes. This is a double pink node. So I know that's my dividing point. I'm going to hover over it and hit the letter D on my keyboard. Then I'm going to select the little horizontal element and I am going to divide again. So I'm gonna be doing two divides on this particular pattern. Sometimes when you're dividing a pattern, you can get away with one divide and sometimes you have to make multiple divides on them. I could have taken the pattern and divided it and only had one element that I repeated, but it was just easier to me to go ahead and just take a minute 
and divide out this bottom portion because I was going to use this pattern over and over again. And that was the easiest place to divide instead of trying to take the pattern because I wanted the vertical element and connect them back again. The next thing that I want to do is I want to divide out this piece on the end that turned it into a pantograph because I don't need that. And I see that I missed one, so I'm going to go back and hit the letter D and then delete that. Now what I can do is marquee select from left to right, make real sure that I'm only getting those little horizontal spaceships and hit the word delete on my keyboard. I haven't changed any sewing orders. I don't see any teal markers here. So this tells me that I have done my divide correctly. If I scroll in really, really, really close and I look, you can see that there is a gap right here but this is also at 7,000%. If there were a gap there that is larger than a stitch length, then Creative Studio would have shown a marker. Let me go to F7 and let me pull this down. You see how that marker shows up? So that tells me that Creative Studio is going to stop. I can move this back. You see how the marker disappears? So there's no reason for you to go back in here and connect all of those particular places right there. What I will do is select the pattern and I will combine the pattern because it's easier to work with whenever I am placing it in this area if I have it as one pattern and be able to put that in there. And I did make it smaller, so you sure want to be sure that you've got a complete length of that pattern. The only other thing that I did was go in and put a draw line for a double channel on the top and on the bottom because I wanted that little bit of separation between the background. When you're doing something like this that has a particular element, it's sometimes a decision that you have to make in that do I want to have a full pattern here or do I want it to look like it is floating underneath another element? And I did that on this quilt in a couple of different places because it looked like it was going under these large triangles that are on the corners. And the other thing is, and you can really see it on this one on the bottom. And the other thing is, if I had tried to make this particular element right here a full pattern, it would have been much smaller than its counterpart. So those are things that you need to think about whenever you're doing something. I hope this helps you a little bit with divide and design, and maybe you can look at your patterns a little bit differently when you have those edge-to-edge -edge patterns in another way that you can use them. I'm pretty fired up to go find another quilt and get it on the machine and start stitching something and figuring it out. So until next time, thank you.